Well, a colorful light show on the Arctic Circle in Finland. The northern lights are on full display. Guests at the Arctic Snow Hotel got to enjoy green, pink, purple, and white lights as all these colors danced across the sky for several hours. Many locals said this was the strongest they've ever seen the Aurora Borealis in months. This wow. is a bucket list event for me. Isn't it? Isn't it? I just, Absolutely. I need to go see this and I need to make the time. That is not a computer do. animation, no. by kidding. the way. I can't, it, oh, it's just so cool, isn't it? And right, it's something beyond. that the locals say this is the most intense it's been in months. Mm -hmm. So they, they see it so regularly and it's on our bucket list. We got to get there. Right now, these disturbing photos have experts on high alert. It is a dire situation along the California coastline. So what is happening in our ocean? Yeah, dying dolphins are washing ashore for no apparent reason right now. Biologists are investigating after at least six dolphins washed up on Orange County beaches this month. Susie and Jeff, rescuers are calling uh, the number of sea lions and dolphins that are washing ashore on Orange County beaches like this one here in Corona Del Mar drastic and unexpected. It's just heartbreaking. From Laguna to Huntington Beach, an unprecedented number of dolphins are washing ashore, dead or so sick they have to be humanely euthanized. It's a, a shock. They're our friends. Are you kidding? I've rode waves with dolphins before. Definite cause for concern. In the last two weeks, the Pacific Marine Mammal Center says five common dolphins and one bottlenose dolphin have washed ashore. Two more were reported but washed back out to sea near Seal Beach. Compare that to just one dolphin last year. Scientists are desperate to find a cause. Sight a person would never expect to see dozens of dead birds littering the road. But that's exactly what a Huntsville man found yesterday, and he counted more than 60 dead birds on Moore's Mill Road near the Ware intersection. He's very concerned. It seems like a plot line straight out of a Hitchcock movie. Dozens of birds falling from the sky. I noticed uh, something uh, that uh, was standing out in the middle of the road. What he saw was a group of more than 60 dead birds covering Moore's Mill Road. That was when his questions began to take flight. To Dr. Jeff Hill, a professor in biological sciences and a curator of birds at Auburn. Have you ever seen dozens of birds die in what looks like the same spot at the same time? No, I've never seen that. He can only guess what happened. We couldn't believe it, a dozen. And now, after another week, there's 50 birds. It's, got all, it's unbelievable. I've been here hiking around this lake for maybe 17 years, and I've never seen it like this. What's killed dozens of ducks in a southeast Calgary park? That's the mystery the city, along with wildlife officials, is trying to unravel. Wayne Clark and his partner Heather Hicks made the grim discovery last week and say each time they've returned, there have been more dead birds. Life on the land is never easy, but what graziers in northwest Queensland are going through right now is something else. It's a bit unexplainable to be honest, like 
they're just it's just cattle everywhere for decades western queensland has prayed for rain but this this is cruelty on an unimaginable level i've never seen anything like it a disaster unlike they've ever seen seven years of drought praying for rain and then so much of it fell their livestock and livelihoods have been washed away. But for all its destruction, the transformation of the region from Dust Bowl to Inland Sea simply is incredible. Well, the dire situation in the northwest of Queensland is now being described by property owners and graziers in that area as the single worst loss of cattle life in Australian history. It's now believed more than 300,000 animals have perished as a result of this major flooding event, a flooding event that continues. Western Queensland is facing the greatest livestock disaster in Australian history, with around half a million head of cattle killed in the flood. Farmers who've been hand feeding stock during the last seven years of drought are now dealing with stock losses on a mass scale. I struggle to um, explain the enormity of the situation in northwest Queensland. Drought breaking downpours, bringing nothing but death and destruction. I've never heard it's on fourth generation and you have a fair bit of history of the district, but I've never heard of anything even remotely like this. It started as their saviour, but now they wish the rain never came. From daybreak to sunset, it's a heartbreaking job. It's the worst tragedy I reckon I've probably ever ever had it's you know you see it in the photos you see it in the papers and but when you see it for real it it really hits home A disturbing story about a humpback whale who was found washed up in the Amazon jungle in Brazil. A seven meter humpback whale genie was found washed up uh, in the Amazon jungle recently. It's believed the young whale may have starved to death and been pushed inland, inland by tides into the jungle. Pessoal, essa é a baleia que encalhou aqui em Suri, na praia do Araruna. Mas eu imaginei que ela estivesse na praia mesmo. Estamos chegando aqui na praia do Araruna, local chamado Morro do Padre. 
Now, a giant humpback whale has been found uh, washed up on a Brazilian uh, beach some 15 meters from the ocean. The actual discovery came about because researchers had noticed a flock of vultures circling around something that turned out to be the whale carcass. Uh, BuzzFeed explains that whales in the Atlantic either spend their summers in the north near Greenland or in the south near uh, Antarctica. It's not clear which camp this whale belonged to, but it's definitely not normal uh, for him to have been in the area at the, this time of the year. They're now conducting studies based on that carcass to find out more concerns about something called zombie deer disease and it's affecting deer in more than 20 states including some that border Alabama. Zombie deer disease. The number of cases is actually up across the country and right here in Utah. The disease was first discovered back in 2002. There are currently 24 states with infected animals. That's 241 counties nationwide and seven of them are right here in Utah. Officials say there are not any recorded human cases. But the disease has been found in deer, elk, and moose in about 26 states. Infected deer have been reported in Mississippi and Tennessee. The disease causes deer to become emaciated. It's always fatal, but before the deer die, they often wander aimlessly, walk in circles, sometimes act tame toward humans, and they can exhibit a number of other unusual symptoms as well. It actually eats holes in the animal's brain, and that's why this term zombie came up in Minnesota, because the deer they lose all fear of humans, they're lethargic. Zombie deer are spreading across North America. They've already been found in Saskatchewan, Quebec, and they're moving into Alberta. In fact, the number of infected deer in Alberta has nearly doubled since 2016. The CDC says some studies suggest the disease poses a risk to non-human primates like monkeys that eat the deer meat. That's what's raising concerns that it could be a risk to people. The World Health Organization says it's important to keep the disease from getting into the human food chain. A recent study shows the number of insects around the world is declining rapidly, adding such a trend could have what it calls a catastrophic effect on the environment. Scientists say 40% of the world's instinct species could go extinct within the next few decades. The report was one of the first to study this on a global level. One of the most noticeable insects that you might not notice as much anymore, butterflies, right? The monarch butterfly, they say, is down 75 to 85 percent in population in the United States just in the last 10 years. Other things that seem to have diminished over the years? It's seeing moths at your lights on the porch and, and seeing fireflies and seeing uh, butterflies in the daytime. 40 percent of insects worldwide are declining at this point. Jessica Beckham explains studies have also shown that because there are millions of undiscovered insect species, we are likely losing unknown species of insects every year. It's startling because they are the base of many of our food chains. So they, they serve as food for many different organisms and they also provide lots of ecosystem services. The old, old, old Florida statement was <laughs> You take all the bees out of our environment, out of our world, in four years we'll follow. We gotta protect them. We gotta protect them the best we can. It's the integrity of our planet that is at threat here. Because all our biodiversity is interlinked. If we lose our biodiversity, we're in deep trouble. We're going to see ecosystem collapse worldwide. Many different ecosystems will be collapsing as insects continue to decline. You might not think that this has much effect on you, but an environmental and ecology professor at UTSA says it is an issue that affects everyone. As much as people don't like finding creepy crawlies like this wetter in their backyard, they play an integral part in keeping our ecosystems intact. In fact, without them, there would be no us either. They do pollination seed dispersal. They make everything that once lived into compost. They heal the soil, make it fertile. They do dung removal. The little critters that keep the world as we know it operating. You've been outside today, you've probably been blown around by those strong, gusty winds, but they're not only wreaking havoc here in our area. Check this video out from Ontario, Canada. 
The extremely cold temperatures combined with the strong winds caused ice to blow from the Niagara River over a retaining wall and then onto a busy highway. Winds were so strong, they were blowing up chunks of ice. You can see there are thousands of pounds of ice being pushed over a retaining wall. It's a picture there. Uh, some are calling it an ice shove or ice tsunami. Ice and water flooded several nearby houses. It caused road closures as well. What almost looks like a small avalanche. Mother Nature's fury for some neighbors with waterfront property to evacuate their homes yesterday. This is what it looks like. In all your years living on the lake, have you ever seen anything like Never, ever. The wind also pushed huge amounts of ice into the Niagara River. This video was taken in Fort Erie and posted on social media by Erie County Executive Mark Polencar. It is amazingly crazy, but it's actually really beautiful. And I've never seen anything like it. Oh, it's like, a, it looks like big ice glacier chunks. All day long, lines of people came to Hoover Beach in Hamburg to see for themselves the gigantic piles of ice created by the windstorm. I've seen a lot of water, but the ice is the first. Barbara and John Schultz lived it, watching the ice pile up closer and closer to their home Sunday afternoon. Well, many people find this cold snap unbearable, but for some photographers, it's an opportunity to capture a natural phenomenon. Light pillars are vert vertical lines of light that appear to shoot up into the sky. It's caused by ice crystals in the cold air. Central Alberta photographer Darlene Tanner has been keeping an eye out for them, often in the middle of the night, obviously. Tanner says she's grateful for this frigid stretch. but was recently lucky enough to capture a number of them all at once. You now I saw light pillars, and then I saw moon dogs, a partial moon halo, and then a lunar pillar. And then on when I took a picture and I looked at it, there was a meteor over top of the moon. That was pretty crazy. That's like a one in a million shot to get. So did you see it if you were up late last night or were in the early riser, you may have gotten an unexpected treat floating above Pittsburgh. They call it a light pillar, and you can see why from all the pictures. What's that in the sky? It's certainly not a bird or a plane, and it's most certainly not the beginning stages of an alien attack. So what is this? A beam of light hovering over Pittsburgh. The short answer, it's Mother Nature doing her best to upstage Harry Houdini. I love it. We absolutely love it. We put on three layers and we go because um, you can see a lot of things out there. Two weeks ago, we also saw moon dogs with light pillars, with the moon halo, with a lunar pillar, with uh, the moon, Venus and Jupiter in conjunction all at the same time, and a meteor passed over the top of the moon all in one shot. Tanner and her partner have also ventured to places like the Northwest Territories and Iceland to capture images of the Northern Lights.